Newcastle in action tonight. It's uh, the FA Cup. They're at Blackburn. It's at Ewood Park and it's live on TalkSport 2. Also tonight, Luton against Manchester City. That one is live uh, on TalkSport. The first one's at 7.45 kickoff. Second, 8 o'clock. And then tomorrow night, oh God, Simon, how about this? Chelsea Leeds United. Yeah. In the FA Cup, live on TalkSport 2. That takes me back. We'll get to that in the fullness of time. And also tomorrow, quarter to eight, Nottingham Forest against Manchester United, a TalkSport exclusive. Uh, some terrific live games in the Cup and you won't miss a trick, uh, of course, with us right here on uh, TalkSport. Eddie Howe has been speaking ahead of that trip uh, to Blackburn. And he was asked, you know, do you see a game like this as some of your players playing for the very futures? Yeah, I can't disagree with with that sentiment. Really, I think, um, as I said earlier, I think there has been performances where we've not been at our best. But you sort of understand we were disjointed. We had players playing out of position. Um, we didn't have any substitutes. We were, you know, relying on eleven players continually. Um, and at this game, it was it was different. It was a different feel. It was just we didn't perform. There's no excuses to that, and we have to take full responsibility. So he takes full responsibility as you would expect him to do. I know Eddie, Simon, I've met, I've met him up in Newcastle on numerous occasions. I like the fella immensely. But there's, but there's no doubt about it. Um, uh, this is not the kind of season that they would have envisaged for themselves had they been able to say, right, by February, whatever it is, the 27th, we would expect to be in X position mm. in the Premier League. So when he talks about players playing for the very futures, playing for the very futures should Eddie include himself in that equation? Um, <clears throat> he answers the question, doesn't he? And it's difficult to not suggest that because uh, ultimately players are playing, every player is playing for the future. It's like a moot question, isn't it? I mean, if people aren't performing at the level that people anticipate they might do in any football club, any manager could be asked that. And so as a result of that, because it's Eddie Howe and because it's, Newcastle United and the expectation levels. If Newcastle United had finished 10th last season and finishing 8th this season would be considered to be progress, they were very unlucky in the Champions League. Um, I think they you know, can consider themselves very unlucky in that competition. Um, and I think it's just a, a second season that they're struggling with. They lost to Nally, which was a, a loss for them. True. Um, but I think that, again, I make the point, you know, the questioning of Eddie Howe comes from the expectation that Newcastle are going to set the place on fire, yet we know that they can't because the financial fair play governance puts it in a position where Newcastle can't spend enormous amounts of money. So this this unhelpful ob uh, observation from Amanda Stavely that we're going to win the Premier League, we're going to win the Champions League, we're going to win the um, FA Cup, we're going to win the League Cup, means that you, you know... The, the, that needs to happen in some what, one day reasonable one day oh yeah well we can all say that that's about you know one day we're going to do this but they don't mean it one day they mean imminently otherwise what's the point of saying it so that means that there's, a, there's going to be an element of focus and pressure Newcastle have spent a decent amount of money on players they will probably continue to spend a decent amount of money on players and also they're going to need to recycle so the argument about Eddie Hearn uh, sorry <coughs> Eddie, Eddie Hearn Eddie, Eddie Howe two Eddies uh, <coughs> Eddie Howe not um, um, being worried for his future is the same as any manager. Mm. If your team is not going forwards and it looks like he's going backwards, and unfortunately the backwards that is going on is because the standards that you you set were so high in your second season or your second first full season, you're going to be constantly on the end of that conversation. I think there's a while to go. I mean, I'd like to think, unless there's a complete and utter wheels coming off of Newcastle, that Eddie's going to be given a little bit more time to prove people like me wrong. I hope so too. Um, and to do that, go deep in this tournament, here's a better idea than that, win it. I mean, if they can win the FA <clears throat> Cup, that, that is what is needed. It's a tall order, but that is what is needed. And then that buys them any amount of time. Well, it'll answer likes. the question, but then we'll have people writing that this wasn't, he, he wasn't brought in to win the FA Cup. The Premier League is where they'll be next. And the Champions League is where they're really after. Yeah, of course, if he wins something, what does Newcastle's last win? What was the last thing they won? The Fairs Cup? Oh, the Fair Cities Cup in about 69 or something. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's almost unbelievable that a club of that scale has not done something. But that, Simon, is why Stavely and the rest brought in Eddie. That's why he is there with Jason Tyndall and Graham Jones, who's a great friend of mine. And early on, it looked as if there was going to be something really special underway okay. there. Let's just examine that observation. Yeah. People that want to win the Premier League 
go to people that have managed teams that have operated at the bottom of the Premier League, do they? A, typically, when you're trying to win the Premier League, which is their aspiration, when you're trying to win all the major tournaments, you tend to go to Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola, well, Carlo why Ancelotti. Arsenal, why did Arsenal appoint Arteta? I, I, that's a different conversation, but you're probably right to bring that into the conversation. But atypically, that might be the exception that doesn't prove the rule, but it may well be an exception as valid in this conversation. All of these people have got experience, vast experience. Yeah, on the Eddie, Tyndall and uh, Graham have yeah. huge experience, Simon. They know what it takes. You saw that in the Champions League. Yeah, well... You saw it. Well, you did and you didn't. Well, because you just didn't... said they were very unlucky yeah, but in the Champions but League. but it didn't qualify. And the moments in time where they had opportunities, I think it was taken away from them with a the PSG game. Um, and the fact that PSG got a penalty in the last couple of minutes that really wasn't a, a, a one that they should have got yeah. gave them an opportunity to be knocked out of this group or at least be knocked out of Europe and not get qualify as a as a third place participant in the Europa League. Um, I, I think that there is, and I maintain this view, and it's got it's not steeped in disrespect, it's not steeped in diminishing anybody, it's steeped in reality. There was a there was a handover period between what Mark Hughes did at Manchester City before Roberto Mancini came through the door. And then, and Mark Hughes's part of the journey was as as was as invaluable to Manchester City as the original, as the ultimate ascent to the throne of Pep Guardiola. It's all part of the journey. You're going so, to draw a parallel with Eddie here. So when I turn around and say that Eddie, you know, Howe doesn't find himself in a situation where he's likely to be the recipient of the major opportunity, it's not because I'm being disrespectful. It's because I'm being realistic and hopeful that, given the fact he's a decent fella, that he gets a longer opportunity. But this is not sentimental. This isn't about who's nice. This is about who wins. And so this ridiculous idea that you have to sugarcoat your thought processes for people like Alan Pardew to sit opposite the show when you're not on it and say that it's disrespectful is silly. It's childish. That's why he's a manager and not an owner because the difference is vast because you've got to make decisions that are not based upon sentimentality. You've got to base decisions upon the, the business of winning and some you get right and some you get wrong. You were just annoyed when Alan Pardew came in and you were off and he was great. You were just annoyed that it was well, that good. I would suggest that that's probably things that are mutually exclusive, Great and Alan Pardew. <laughs> but the point is, is that you're in a situation where it's a, it's a, it's not a disrespectful observation. It's not disrespectful to advance the notion that in order to win the Premier League, it's going to be remarkably difficult. And atypically, on a journey when a football club ascends into a position of of great opportunity. It tends to be that the first ones out of the door are gatekeepers. He didn't like that, but that's the word that Alan didn't like. Gatekeepers. Well, he, he thought, should, that, he thought well, that was too strong. Well, the gate that he should have kept was the one where he was in Barcelona with the West Bromwich Albion players. They kept them locked in their rooms Come rather on. than driving around crashing taxis into walls. <laughs> that's too, That's a cheap shot and you it's know true, it. It's true though, isn't it? If, if, uh, I'll, be, I'll be brutally frank with you here. If Newcastle United finish where they are... Yeah, they've done all right. Tenth. They've done all right. They're not 10th, are they? I thought they were, are they 10th now? They're 10th. What? If you can, thanks, Simon. If Newcastle United finish 10th and say go, a, say go a couple of rounds more in the FA Cup, yeah, maybe one after this, is that enough for Eddie to carry on next season? Um, yeah. That's I mean, the question. Well, the problem is that you're judging him by a set of standards last year. Newcastle finishing 10th is not a revelation, is it? It's not, you know, you've got Wolves above them, you've got West Ham above them, you've got Brighton above them. No, but if you finish top four, and I like Eddie, I'm not making an argument I against know. him. If you finish top four, you at least expect to finish top six next season. Yes, and I said to you at the beginning of the season that I felt that it would be difficult for Newcastle to maintain this position. Yeah. I mean, Stuart Pearce thought they're going to win the bloody league, for God's sakes. Well. Um, and the point is, is that it's a difficult one. It shows mm. you that there's difficulty. And then that when we look at Gary O'Neill and the job that he's done, you know, Lopetagi couldn't cope with it, out the door. It's interesting, Gary O'Neill, just on a tangent, gets a job at Bournemouth on the back of Scott Parker flapping his chops about how bad the owners are and what he hasn't got. Does a great job with them. You've got Lopetagi going out the door saying, they sold me a pup, they sold me a pup. Lopetagi. Yeah, whatever his name is. Right? <laughs> out the door. I shouldn't know, I lived in Spain for years. Um, <laughs> lopsided Tagi, right? He couldn't cope with the pressure of managing a football club. Oh, right. they, 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 but anyway, yeah. he, and so Gary O'Neill walks into the same sort of situation where yeah, he's yeah. been given a sort of weakened outlook and yet he's doing a very good job at Wolves in ninth they're above Newcastle so when you look at this and say if Newcastle finish well, and a couple more rounds in the FA Cup so what if you don't no, win I agree, the FA I agree. Cup there's nothing it's, is it uh, correct so <laughs> they were battered on Saturday by Arsenal is 10th going to be battered. good enough I'm not, I'm not sure battered I'm not sure alright say battered one battered more. okay on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport